Hey everybody, I got a video here for you today. We're going to talk a little bit more about some ancient America. And we are going down to the Carolinas today and we're going to talk about a few sites that really go back a long, long way. And the first one is in this area, and this is probably the most famous one. Now I'm not sure exactly where the site is, but I think it's right in this area. It's east of the Savannah River. But I've had a couple conflicting sources on where exactly this is. Maybe somebody can straighten me out. And I know a lot of you saw this video on Geocosmic Rex channel, the channel that features Randall Carlson. But here they have a, about a four-part series here from Graham Hancock investigating the Topper site. And I will leave links below. Now I will leave the link below. This is from the Post and Courier. It says, were ancient humans here 50,000 years ago? South Carolina discovery reveals people were in region before previously thought. And here is work going on at the Topper site. And it says, people were burning fires at a quarry near the Savannah River as far back as 50,000 years ago. That would have been before the worst of the last ice age and millennia before South Carolina is thought to have been inhabited. The stunning finding from the Topper site near Allendale could rock the state research world less than two decades after Al Goodyear's first dig there took the lid off conventional archaeology thinking. Topper is a lot older than 15,000 years ago, Goodyear said, referring to the date he established with his earlier work. I think this is going to be the next frontier of exploring human origins. When and where did our people begin when and where did they disperse? There's a lot at stake here. Remains of charcoal deep in the ground were found to be approximately 50,000 years old when they were radiocarbon dated. Other stone tool artifacts were uncovered alongside of them. Goodyear and the Topper team are preparing findings for a peer review publication. And I believe Graham Hancock features, or will certainly feature this in his book coming up. He talked about it to put it in context, a startling recent find of stone tools, animal bones that have been butchered and masted on tusk at a Florida dig. If the dating is solid and the artifacts identified as being anthropogenic, which is man-made, without any doubt, this is a splendid addition to our knowledge of early human occupation of North America, says Philip Manning, College at Charleston, paleontologist. I have no doubt that this will be a hotly debated topic for some time, as the paradigm shifts often take a while to gain acceptance, but the evidence appears to be solid. And I will leave the link for this below. Now I made a video about the Town Creek Mound in North Carolina, but South Carolina has about five different mound sites that are recognized. The Addison Mounds in Kershaw County, Blair Mound in Fairfield County, the Lawton Mounds in Allendale County near the Topper site, the McCollum Mound in Chester County, and the Santee Mound in Clarendon County. And I'll just show you here. We'll zoom into that Santee Mound. It's on a kind of a wildlife preserve here. And from overhead, you really can't notice it that well. I'll just zoom in here. This is located right on the water here. From overhead, you can't really make out too much. Here is the Santee Mound today with the stairway coming up. But this is, they theorize, a burial mound coming from about a thousand years ago. Now, the Mound Builders is fascinating enough, but if you go back maybe 11 or 12,000 years before the Mound Builders, and you look at places like the Topper site and a few other sites I'm going to mention, we have evidence of human occupation going back 10, 30, 50,000 years. Do we really know anything about ancient America and the history of humans? Do we just have to dig down? Now, I will leave the link for this below, but it has kind of a general location of the site here. Some pics of the excavation. But here they go over the pre-Clovis dispute and some artifacts found. But what is clear? The environment of South and North Carolina was totally different 11, 12,000 years ago. It was a totally different world back then. Now I'm just going to play a clip that goes over the megafauna that we have lost that were roaming in the Carolinas. 
maybe 11, 12,000 years ago and previous, and I think this is just fascinating, and the world did change 12,000 years ago, and this is proof of that. And 10,000 years ago, or 11,500, depending, um, there were a lot of animals that would be called megafauna, and uh, we ordinarily think of megafauna as animals like uh, larger than a deer or larger than a bear, something that is really big. So what characterizes North Carolina uh, 15,000 years ago was a great abundance of huge herbivores, so that we had giant bison, we had at least two different kinds of horses, uh, we had tapers, uh, pretty husky looking animals, you know, they're compactly made. Uh, we had two different kinds of hogs, wild hogs here. Um, my goodness, we had camels, uh, we had uh, sloths, and some of the ground sloths were absolutely huge. Uh, they're um, probably in the range of small elephants, i.e. three tons, three ton animals, and they're all over North Carolina. Um, the thing that really is spectacular, as far as I can see, from my point of view, is we had three different kinds of elephants in North Carolina. Uh, now, an elephant goes about five metric tons, four to five to six metric tons, depending on how large uh, an animal we're dealing with. We had prairie mammoths. We had woolly mammoths. And we had mastodons, which lived in forests. Now, in North Carolina, near Baden, and I think this is called Lake Baden here, but there are actually two sites called the Hardaway site. One is just called plain old the Hardaway site, and then the other one is called the Bochum Hardaway site, and this is the location for it here on this little map. But here is an article on the Hardaway site, and here are some artifacts found. And these go back at least 10,000 years. Here are some more. And then there is another site called the Bochum Hardaway site, and this is the place on Baden Lake it is located. And here is an excellent website on the Bochum Hardaway site that is, I think, about 20 miles away from the other Hardaway site, but really a father and son all by themselves did most of the research here. They weren't given any money. And... They did a fantastic study, and I will leave this link below. You can click on different arrowheads and get different information and pics from the Hardaway site, the Bochum Hardaway site, and that is named after Heath Bochum, the site discoverer. Now here's the historical marker. It says, Hardaway site, archaeological site key to understanding earliest native population. Its occupation dates to circa 10,000 B.C. Now let's just listen to a clip from the University of North Carolina Archaeology, and they make their video shareable, which is really appreciated, especially on this video. But let's just listen to them talk about the Hardaway site and why people came here. People came to Hardaway for reasons other than simply acquiring resources. Um, one important reason they came together was to acquire information. Um, we know from the kinds of artifacts that occur at Hardaway that people were coming here from fairly distant places. And because of this, they probably brought different ideas and also new information that could be shared with other people whom they met at Hardaway. Uh, another reason why people were benefit that people would have or obtain from coming to Hardaway was in terms of obtaining a mate. Um, for most of the year, the, um, the groups of people, what we call bands, um, who came to Hardaway lived in very small groups and ranged over very large areas. And we think, based on um, contemporary ethnographic information, that people who live in bands generally practice what's called exogamy. And this is a practice of obtaining one's spouse from outside the group rather than from within the group. And so coming to Hardaway at certain times of the year, of the year aggregating with other groups, would provide more of an opportunity for obtaining a mate. Now I will leave a link to this video. This is another site, the Barber Creek site, but this goes back 10, 12,000 years and they have only got down to a certain level, but I will leave the link for this video below too. And another video I will leave the link to is the prehistoric canoes of North Carolina and they have found canoes as old as 4,500 years old and as long as 40 feet long, so those are really big. 
and those are pretty large canoes as we would call them but I will leave the links to these below too. Now when reading about these sites one thing appears certain there is a layer where everything changed and it is a it's described as a black mat and I know those of you who have listened to Randall Carlson's videos know about that it's like a period where North America was set on fire and then everything above it is different than what is below it and this is physics.org and I use them in my Great Pyramid energy study video but it says did a massive comet explode over Canada 12,900 years ago wiping out both beast and man in North America and propelling the earth back into the Ice Age and I think man was basically wiped out in North America 12,900 years ago along with the megafauna it says that's a question that has been hotly debated by scientists since 2007 with the University of South Carolina's topper archaeological site right in the middle of the com comet impact controversy however a new study published today in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences provides further evidence that it may not be such a far-fetched notion Albert Goodyear an archaeologist in the USC's College of Arts and Sciences is a co-author on a study that upholds a 2007 study by Richard Firestone a staff scientist at the departments of Energy's Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory Firestone found concentration of spherules micro-sized balls of metals and nano-sized diamonds in a layer of sediment dating to 12,900 years ago at 10 of 12 archaeological sites that his team examined a mix of particles is thought to be a result of an extraterrestrial object such as a comet or meteorite exploding in the Earth's atmosphere now of course we have Robert Schock and others thinking it was a solar outburst but the one thing we can all agree on something really bad happened about 12,900 years ago I think we can all agree on that it says the topper story Albert Goodyear who conducts research through the University of South Carolina's Institute of Anthropology and Archaeology began excavating Clovis artifacts along the Savannah River in Allendale County in 1984 it quickly became one of the most documented and well-known Clovis sites in the United States in 1998 with the hope of finding evidence of a pre-Clovis culture earlier than accepted 13,100 years Goodyear began focused excavations on a site called Topper located on the property of the Clariant Corporation his efforts paid off and of course the further down they went the dates just got older and older and older dating back really as far as they've gotten to 50,000 years old people were making fires and pits 50,000 years ago studies have found well I think this is all very fascinating this is the history of the very ancient Carolinas so here's a timeline of what they discovered at the topper site 98 is when things really got going and then it just got older and older and then in 2004 radiocarbon dates to fire pits comes back at 50,000 years old how much do we really know about the ancient United States and how much is just simply buried and we just don't know what does academia think about these sites that really are rewriting history well I'm just gonna finish it here with a clip from the University of North Carolina archaeology department and their shareable videos I thought they were great but I just screenshot this one the audio isn't the best but the information is still there and it kind of wraps up this video I hope you thought this was interesting and you all have a very nice day how long have people been in the new world um, we really don't know for sure but archaeologists are asking this question and have been asking it for years um, most archaeologists will readily accept that man has been here at least 10 12 thousand years maybe a little bit bit longer certainly since the end of the last ice age but some archaeologists now are claiming that they have evidence that man has been here much, much longer, say up to 30,000 years, 50,000 years. And some of these sites are not too far from North Carolina. There are sites in Virginia, sites in South Carolina, and elsewhere. Now, most archaeologists tend to take a more cautious view and 
while they may be ready to accept the possibility that man has been here much longer, they're very cautious about accepting the present evidence as being irrefutable evidence that that is in fact the case.